and questions around mental well-being uh, that you know how to keep yourself calm and you know how to keep focused um how to sort of you know live in the values that you have for example harmony per se peace and harmony how to keep that to your core while you're still going through this situation um so given that and with all the sort of you know um uh, pressing need that was coming from our audience we set up this uh, episode so yeah and um both myself and sabad we will be kind of pitching in and out but majorly we would like to hear from our uh, guest today both uh, umar and uh, maryam to take this forward uh, so umar maybe um, you and maryam can start off with your introductions a little bit and then uh, we take on the conversation forward sure uh should i go first yes please umar okay uh so my name is omar tasif i've uh, been around the mental health space for around 9 or 10 years um i've been doing a bunch of stuff i primarily uh, do work with individuals but then i've i've done organizational work especially on topics of wellness um i've been based in australia in the last uh, year uh, but i still am very connected with um, my work through skype in pakistan and a lot of pakistanis around the world but so, so i've been i've been preparing for for the corona for the last one year um, and i've been working primarily uh, through through a digital medium uh, that's where i'm at okay all right uh, my name is maryam sunheel um and i am a therapist uh, based in lahore um i primarily work with couples and families but i also have an individual case load um other than that i al- also work with bigger systems omar and i both actually work with bigger systems such as uh, corporates and uh, you know other industries and uh, today i think that we really wanted to take this opportunity when amra um, asked us to join in to actually connect with a wider network and see you know um what all of you uh, might be how all all of you might be coping or enjoying you know at the same time uh, this uh, quite strange and unprecedented uh, circumstance and uh, although omar and i we have both uh, given our introductions and we are psychologists and mental health professionals but just to put things in perspective i think we are equally vulnerable um, in the face of this um, you know this pandemic this calamity or whatever has kind of shifted our lives i think uh, we are not above or beyond that so let's try and somehow co-create and share and learn from each other in this space today rather than uh, you know just um, hearing from us So that's something that I would like to really invite everyone to do today. Great. I think uh, the most um, important area that our all uh, people uh, have been talking about and demanding on the uh, group was that that this is unprecedented time. Yes, uh, and uh, we have been going through the situation, and we've been talking about it, and people are. Um, very quickly have moved from offline in office working to an online working now what is affecting them is not only the entire close down situation but a sudden change so mm-hmm. you are uh, you have moved from one way of working to a totally new way of working and that sudden change is Uh, along with all the other pressure of being locked down and not being able to access and mm. having so much psychological information pressing us that oh we are in danger all these things mixed up with the changes is affecting a lot of major part of our sanity so right. we are coping at many fronts at one time so our absolutely would like to know from both of you as an expert uh, whoever wants to take the lead it's okay that how first and the most keep our sanity in check what are those telltale signs oh now i need to you know talk to someone or am i getting mm. affected really right one right. of the things mariam um, and i were talking about before uh, this conversation was actually this which is that we were just reflecting that as therapists uh, how are people doing um, people who we work with and this may sound strange to uh, a lot of people but i personally believe that a lot of our clients are are doing 
a lot better than, than in normal times and the non-pandemic times. Um, and then we were just debriefing each other that what are some of the reasons we may think that that may be true, because you're right that this is completely novel, this is strange, this is unprecedented, this is generating a lot of anxiety. But if you consider any, any growth experiences, any changes, they generally are uncomfortable. But as a result of any of these experiences, it is what we make of them. So I, I think that roughly I'm meeting two sorts of people. There are people who are using this opportunity to connect with themselves, to connect with their environment, to have gratitude for what they used to have, sort of in a way even looking forward to what they want to do in the coming weeks and months and having a lot of time to be doing things that they've wanted to for years. And these are the people who are actually doing a lot better. So before we assume that everyone is doing worse, I actually want to throw it in there that a lot of people are actually doing okay. And before we impose that pressure that, oh, everyone must be doing worse, uh, mm. I, I feel that a lot of people are running that by us and saying that, well, is it weird that hum actually cheek hai? We're doing okay and we're not off and oh, yes. we're yes. feeling even better. Are we in denial? Are we just... Uh, delusional about this whole thing Absolutely. are we just hiding under a rock so I wanted to also throw it in there that uh, before we assume that something is wrong there are a lot of things that are actually going okay for people as well great insight hmm. great insight yeah. great I well I, so tell me one thing I mean am I okay I'm not feeling happy about all this <laughs> what do you think, I'm Maria? also one from one of them I'm feeling happy <laughs> And yeah. I started. <laughs> I have started enjoying everything, and I, I yes. have started consuming my work and all those things which I wanted to do throughout my life, and I didn't get time. Absolutely. And now I, I have, uh, I am uh, uh, rediscovering my skills also, and my inner self also. Absolutely true. Yeah. True. Okay. Uh, I would want to add one thing as well. Uh, this is Usman, by the way. Um, before the lockdown actually um, began, so I was under the impression that we might not be working that much from home. And I was always under the impression that working from home is something which I, um, which would basically cut down the amount of tasks that I need to do. But actually, it was entirely a different experience that I personally experienced that the number of items that I was responsible for or the amount of uh, work that I had to do had enormously increased. Um, this oh, was yes. something unexpected for me, at least for myself. Mm. Great. Usman, are you talking about professionally or personally? Uh, both. <laughs> professionally, but right now right. I was talking about the profession, the work-wise. Um, um, anything that I was, let's say if I was looking right. after three projects at a time, but I, it bumped up to like five or six, and it seemed as if the um, the workload had just, you know, shooted up like anything. And this is not just me. Actually, I, I spoke to other people as well, not just in the company where I used to work, but other companies as well. And everybody was somewhat experiencing the same thing. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I would second to Swan in this scenario. For instance, I am sort of facing the same issue. Uh, uh, probably the reason behind is, uh, one, obviously, there is a lot more to do these days. Obviously, you have to stay connected and you have to attend a lot of calls during the day. And then the productivity, probably in my case, I'm not sure how about others, but productivity in my case has, for instance, uh, the in terms of collaboration, you, uh, for, for instance, if you're in office, you can easily talk to, you know, your, your colleagues and everything. You can align things in, in minutes, but now it's, it's a bit tricky and difficult. So for me, uh, the work hours have dramatically increased. For example, if we are in office, we know, okay, we're at six, I'm going to go home, I'm going to, you know, change the routine, I'm going to go work out or something, but once I'm home, so I'm working, I don't know if it's nine or if it's eight or something. So this is something we need to manage. Exactly. Mm. I, 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 uh, this is Aisha here. Sorry. Um, go ahead. I, 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 I agree with the mess. Uh, you know, our, our tasks have dramatically increased because I'm in the, I'm in academia and, um, 
previously, you know, teaching in the university required a lot less effort on our part, but teaching online requires us to develop a lot more resources than we had to previously develop, which means online lectures. Uh, you know, first we have to invest the time in making our lectures and making videos and then having discussions. So our work is doubled. And in my case, because hmm. I'm a working mother with two small kids, uh, I have to homeschool them as well because I cannot afford to leave them alone. Because, you know, they're kids and two, uh, three months, if I, if I don't uh, homeschool, school them they'll pretty much forget everything that they know uh, given their <laughs> age and uh, you know added to that i'm also doing my phd at the same time so i to bhi rahi hu padha bhi rahi hu bachcho ko bhi ghar ke bhi sare kaam khud of course uh, we are not letting our maids come we're not letting any uh, nannies enter the house but, you know for precautionary reasons so i think i am one of those people jisne sabse zyada interest ke sath shayad ye a uh, session join kiya because th- there are times i absolutely lose it and i lash out at my husband i lash out at my kids i don't want to but you know there's just so much that one person can do and manage and i don't want to give up on any of these things i don't want to give up on my kids i don't want to give up on my uh, you know career i don't want to give up on my phd so how does one really find calm, calm in a storm like the one i'm experiencing right now me to i'm, I'm losing it because there are times i'm just like you know so ready to give up but i'm trying to be resilient i'm i'm trying uh, to you know push myself mm. as much as i can um, but now i st- i i've started feeling that it's the toll on my uh, physical health uh, and it's also taking a toll on my mental health i'm i'm, I'm actually experiencing anxiety attacks in the morning i wake up and i'm you know i can feel my heart racing really fast and i i know these are not mm. good signs but i i mm. just don't know how to manage it all it's already been a month and day in day out i'm getting mm. no rest and constantly on my toes and investing myself physically and mentally so mm. advice you're, here you you're right aisha the the moment you said that you know you're um, experiencing anxiety attacks i think i can feel that in your voice when you start talking there's a lot of pressure that i'm feeling you know mm-hmm. that i think you're experiencing um uh, these days and under these uh, circumstances and that is something that umar and i were talking about just before we joined the session that how if we can keep some things in perspective uh that can offer some flexibility and compassion to our own self you know what could be that perspective that can help us be more flexible and compassionate towards our own selves mm-hmm. right because when you uh, from what i've heard from you it looks like uh, you know you are really thinking that if you don't work this hard you will be giving up on so yeah. many things you will be giving up on your kids or you will be giving up at, on your work so mm-hmm. if we can try and have a perspective that these times are different right mm-hmm. and they require for a different kind of attitude mm-hmm. and that attitude uh is that redefining our um our um um definitions of what is necessary what is giving up what is achievement what is um, failure what is losing what is winning you know all these things need to be redefined for yourself right mm-hmm. if your kids today for the next 3 months don't learn anything academically they'll forget mm-hmm. that but mm-hmm. what they can gain experientially from this experience they're going to that can be a memory for the rest of their life right mm-hmm. that when we were small this happened and we were like you know people talk about uh, 1971 and 1947 mm-hmm. and you know all those mm-hmm. times that when we were little mm-hmm. that happened uh, 6 september hua tha aur barracks mein log bhage so n- nobody talks about ki un dino hum school nahi gaye the right yeah true so, true uh, very true you you need to really f- start redefining things for yourself and that's for everyone you know so mm-hmm. what is education what you're telling me ke unki memory se cheez nikal jayegi memory is not education right mm-hmm. so um let's let's um, start keeping a different attitude which is more open minded if something becomes really stressful for you 
try and look at how am I thinking about this particular thing. Okay. If, I, I would, uh, uh, Mariam, I would ask one thing. Sorry to yeah. cut you in here. Uh, one aspect that Aisha has shared uh, that she's feeling anxiety and she can actually very well put it in her words that she's feeling so and so. Uh, what if uh, I am pretending, probably not really pretending in my consciousness, but I am apparently very, very okay and I'm doing all the things mechanically mm -hmm. what I'm doing. And I'm unable to recognize my anxiety or my consciousness is not picking up that I am stressed. What are those signs that my sanity is getting affected? Uh, Omar or Mariam, whoever wants to. I want to quickly just add to what Mariam was saying, which is um, uh, in response to Aisha, which is that that's the neuroticism that is being generated for a lot of people. Uh, by that, I just mean that sense of that negativity and that dread and that gloom and that pressure and that, um, that, that entire sense that, okay, well, I have to get all of these things done. And I will second what Mariam uh, is saying that uh, with these times, we, we also got to change some gears where from, from that very long-term perspective of things, what education means, it's got to be very day-to-day. And in that mm -hmm. sense that being easy on one's own self, that that this is probably the first time in our lifetimes and that, that we have faced something like this, this extended lockdown, that lockdown has never happened. So what does it mean for us to give up on some plans? And what mm -hmm. can be some small goals we can have? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. What can be some ways that we can use this time for that self-care as well? This is not a normal time. This is not that time that, that we were meant to have holidays. This is not going to be the time that we're going to have that promotion. This is not going to be that time that some, some very uh, big life events like people's marriages, uh, uh, international travel, conferences, everything stands uh, at a halt. So what can we do to maintain a sense of normalcy while we are also not generating so much of the neuroticism? So we want to also balance out some of that negativity uh, by, by just slowing yeah. down and allowing oneself, giving mm. ourselves that permission that it's actually mm. okay to slow down. This is, this is not right. just me, this is everyone. Yes. We're all in this together. And while, we're all, while we are all in, in this together, what can be some things that I'm willing to give up? including, for example, um, is, is it okay for our children not to be learning the way they were learning at school? Is it okay yes. for me to not be working the way I used to work earlier? And I would understand that, that what, what Omer said earlier and what Usman said earlier, that even some work tasks may have increased in a way. But this mm. is the time that, that we can also ask ourselves, which is that now that if you think about it, some of the time that was spent in commuting yeah. every day, some of the time that was spent in, in lunch breaks every day, some of the time that was spent in after work activities, in traffic, we have some access to extra time. What can we do in that time that connects us to our own selves, to people around us, to our systems, and even things that, that you were meant to do? Things that, that I, I, in the last couple of weeks, I've heard so many men and women say, uh, women saying this about their husbands that hum ab, hum shadi ke baad se saal baad pehli dafa hua hai ke hum ghar pe ek, ek, we're in the same place and our husbands are there and they're actually seeing their kids and husbands saying that well this is the first time that we are at home and we are actually a part of our children's learning and uh, husbands saying about that that we, we've never seen our wives routines our working wives routines that this is all they do and then they're also taking care of the children so these are also small things that we can stop pause and that these be also sort of integrated into our own selves that hamare pas in cheezon ka kabhi waqt hi nahi tha that we even notice these things and now is that yeah. time now is not the time to to do business as usual this is not a normal business as usual mm -hmm. time and you know regarding the relationship right so you know the husband and wife living together i was just going through one of the articles uh, that said that in Wuhan, the divorce rate has gone up post-COVID mm -hmm. situation. And mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, a bit on that, that, you know, our social cultures and domestic culture uh, structures has been like, and I will share my own experience, uh, as I was saying, that, you know, there, being a working woman, what I felt right in the beginning of this whole, uh, you know, situation, that there is much more, far more pressure which is coming my way as a working woman, right? 
and Especially I'm not- as a working mom, you know, not just as a working woman, working mom of small kids. You know, you you also have very very young mm-hmm. kids. Absolutely. So you know, so I I what I initial the jerk reaction was that you know there is a lot of pressure which is coming why my way because the domestic help is not there. Mm-hmm. Um, the children are not going to school. They don't have discipline. And then you know, apart from that, also mm-hmm. the fact that uh, the work is there. The job is still there. I'm working from home, right? So, हमारे तो वो structure. So maybe I think in Pakistan, we were very, we are very privileged, right? नौकर आ रहे हैं, काम हो रहा है, and everything is happening. And you know, while we are doing our work, so I, I kind of sort of you know see that and can relate. To that. <laughs> But moving on, do you think that this is an opportunity also to redefine the relationships that we have at homes? Hmm. I'll right. let Mariam so, take the lead. <laughs> No, no, that's fine. Uh, so I was just uh, uh, watching this um, episode of Daily Show yesterday, which was talking about how love has changed um, in these times, right? And how when I said that I'll be married to you forever, I actually meant three hours at night and a couple of hours in the morning. But right now, <laughs> it is just twenty-four hours, and I did not sign up for that. Okay, so that. is a, and from what sabahat was saying in the very beginning that realize that you are everything is about this is different so you cannot impose what was there before to now and hmm. even when the pandemic ends things will not go back to what they were before they just hmm. will not okay so just waiting to resume your life uh from you know uh, march 1st will not happen so this is a, t- a time where you will have to transform it yeah. the time is asking for transformation these things yeah. are asking for transformation and the more flexible you are and let the transformation happen you will grow out of it otherwise there will be a lot of resistance and clash in this process I so, I was yes. just thinking one more thing that uh, uh, so as as you and Omar both said one thing that uh, every one of us are feeling different way of expressing ourselves uh, this time. Uh, so for example, uh, someone who is very much into meeting up people every day and going out and meeting up and having fun all the time is a bit disconnected at this point in time. And those who are already uh those kind of people who were like happy at home they are enjoying mm-hmm. self but there is a middle middle way large set who is kind of ambitious at this point in time i am doing this i am doing that and i am doing lot of it because probably they have experienced themselves always busy in this experience of not doing or uh probably having so much to work or not doing at all is a dissonance that is being created for them in uh, that mm-hmm. umar as you said that slowing down doesn't come naturally to many people yeah, and they feel that they are being dysfunctional mm-hmm. yes uh, true true absolutely it's actually the thing out of to do is which is not happening now yes, yes. how do you check nailed out it. the and yeah absolutely like- nailed sabahat <laughs> so so that to do list is not coming up you know yeah uh, so, and they are not realizing that house chores with the uh, work and with the with the kids and with relationship everything is right there in one plate so multitasking as we used to think is a completely different norm now multitasking mm-hmm. it used to be oh i am a multitasking working woman so i raise kids i maintain my relationship i work this and why but in essence we were not multitasking we were at yeah. work with mm-hmm. home life behind us but right mm-hmm. now we are home well, life work with mm. kids parenting yeah. together and teaching so all of this multitasking is in one plate it's a full course meal right at one in place rather than mm. having one course at one time mm. so that mm. is making probably some people you know, a bit overburdened and hence anxious in mm. some feeling not having enough and anxious in mm. uh, that's an un, you know unrecognizable feeling for us so mm. so i it, it look at us our ourselves a lot of people are saying that i'm fine i'm just in our poll as well one or two people are feeling that we are uh, you know uh, 
uh, a bit anxious but some of people are saying oh i'm fine what is this definition of fine uh, right now Anybody can i add it? can i add here sabahat yeah. yeah sure sure uh, because uh, the one who has started accepting the situation and who has started accepting this that uh, going out all the time and meeting with people and having fun with people uh, we need to give a break to uh, this con- uh, this uh, kind of connections and uh, we can get busy on working more on our personal relationships hmm. on our personal life uh, on which we it is an assignment for us now Uh, mm-hmm. which is uh, given to each and every person in the whole world so i think if we start adopting and start accepting this situation we can uh, get more happy we can keep our anxiety level down because uh, um, uh, i'm very much concerned about aisha who who ha- who is uh, having younger kids also who is having her university teaching Uh, which is very tough uh, uh, she is also working on her uh, studies also uh, mean uh, if uh, uh, if you can consider my suggestion also the uh, 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 sir uh, umar umas uh, he she, he has also suggested her that uh, she can uh, minimize her uh, anxiety level for uh, not giving attention to her kids right now she can have fun with her kids with her girls uh even if they are not uh, meeting uh, uh, their homework assignments she can have fun with her uh, own phd assignments and she can work more and she can focus more on her uh, university uh, teaching uh, assignments and the workload at home uh, that can be i think uh, divided uh, with the uh, with his partner also and i again i i believe that if you will start accepting the situation that this situation will be ended uh, hopefully uh, positively then i think uh, we will feel less uh, anxiety than we are uh, feeling right now i'm uh, i'm sharing my some, experience sure. because in the start i was very much uh, stressed i was uh, a bit of uh, 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 afraid also that what would happen but now uh, if you have taken all the precautions and you and if you have set your routine and goals short term goals uh, you will feel less uh, like uh, in anxiety thanks thank so much very quickly maryam and umar assalam alaikum wa alaikum assalam so just uh, talking about the transformational times maryam that you just mentioned uh, that these are the uh, times amra mai thoda hello hello yes please go ahead uh amra you can continue you can continue oh, yeah sure i'll just uh, bring you in sabrina so just you know talking about this mm-hmm. transformational times and the connection we, we also spoke about the connection with self that you know being mm. compassionate towards your own self the self care and then talking about the transformation yeah. time do you have any quick mm. tips to share you know and mm-hmm. you know because mm. that's, that will benefit each one mm. of us mm. right i think umar uh, made a list of these over if you could quickly go through those tips because they're very important yeah. sure so so uh, i actually was gathering a couple of things um that i sent out to my clients i put it um some some uh, in publication as well simple things i'll i'll quickly go over them that uh, first things first numbers make sense in terms of uh, uh, that that uh, that what do those numbers uh, mean in terms of uh, in comparison to other numbers so a lot of times people are throwing those numbers that oh it's been 5000 cases of this it's been these many deaths or something although that that brings up so much grief and anxiety for people who've gone through it but there's always a balance of of those things happening at all times there are for example there are more than 4000 or 5000 people who pass away in in pakistan every day due to preventable or or unpreventable causes old age but those are not numbers we are aware of every day uh, i was researching numbers that every year around 
10 million people die of cancer, 1.4 million people die of road accidents, 1 million people die of HIV, another 1.5 million die of TB, but you don't have that flashing across TV screens every day that 30,000 people have died from substance overdoses every day, but that's the number. So right now we need to also find a way to take that perspective that these numbers obviously are uh, very uh, worrying for us, however, as long as what is in our control that we need to take those precautions, we need to take care of, of that social distancing, hygiene, but that's all you need to do right now. The vulnerable members of our population, our families, they need to take care. We need to take care of them. We need to take care of whatever is required of us by the state, by the governments. But besides that, don't let that dread come over. The reality of this virus may be very different from the anxiety of what we're experiencing and we need to separate. And those. sorry, just to add to that, something that I've done with some of my clients is that if you are overtaken by, by that anxiety, sit down for a couple of minutes, right? And try and list, uh, try and pay attention to the fact that you in this moment, right here, right now are okay right? You do not have any health issue in this moment, right? Yes. And then look around your loved ones. All of them are hopefully okay, right? And most of us who are here talking about this are in a situation where our loved ones around us are okay, right? And when we are thrown all these numbers and information at us, we lose that perspective. Yeah, Absolutely. we jump into an other world where there's a lot of chaos and we forget that in this little house that we're sitting, we are very safe. Mm -hmm. After taking all those precautions, we are safe and we are okay and yeah. people who matter to us are also okay. So just invest mm -hmm. one and a half minutes on this exercise if you can on your own. Absolutely. Just that sense of being in the present. Uh, uh, we were so used to overthinking that we sometimes yeah. forget that your thoughts and your overthinking is not going to fix it. To start with, there is nothing to fix. So just coming to that sense of being in the present, being in the sense that we all have privilege. We're sitting here. There is some reason we, that we can we can sit and talk about it. Just just becoming aware of that privilege, becoming aware of that in the present moment, in the here and now, which is that we have that bounty. We have enough. We, we have enough to be okay. We have right. enough to eat. We have enough to those things where right. minimally our families have what they need. Our children have what they need. And we can be okay in this moment. Not two moments from here, not five moments before, not idealizing the past that it was that three months ago, it was so good when we were doing this, we were doing this. Or four months later, oh wow, I'm, I can't bear the thought of being in the present. I want to just pause this and go into the future. Not any of those, but in this moment, right now, we're actually okay. We have enough. Yeah. Um, so I'd also like to point out that sense of avoiding that selective attention. Uh, that, that we are so focused on the negative and that's also one of the things that our brain overdoes that when it's worried it focuses on all what is going wrong so instead of doing that we can also focus on all that is even okay so even if you're looking at, at numbers of, of of any and every country what you would see is that there is a very small proportion of people who are unfortunately who had critical symptoms of the virus or who suffered but a very large part of people who have even contracted the virus will be okay. And you can also focus on Recovered, that. Recovered, yes. They will yes. recover. Um, and, and we also want to, to really just focus on that sense of aliveness, that, 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 that mm. in, in, in that difficult dance of life, there is always going on the road on a normal day is a, is a very threatening thing. There's a statistic that you can be hit by lightning just, just on, on any day, there's a, there's, there's a certain fatality associated with being on the road. There's a certain fatality associated with being in a plane. But as we completely somehow delude ourselves that those risks don't exist, that helps us go through that sense of normalcy. They're all normal things. So that sense of right now, that rupture that is coming in the world, you, you've got to also trust that what follows from every rupture is also that repair. If you're mindful enough and you can do things right enough right now, what always follows from every adversity is something different that comes. 
आप आप याद करें कि आज से तीन महीने पहले हम लाहौर की एयर क्वालिटी के बारे में वर्ड थे उससे तीन महीने yeah. पहले देर वॉज दैट सेंस दैट एमेजोन जंगल इज बर्निंग आउट ऑस्ट्रेलिया में द बुश फायर गोइंग ऑन एट इट सीम लाइक दैट द वर्ल्ड इज गोइंग टू फॉलो पार्ट इस इस हफ्ते इस दिन एवरी थिंग इज गोइंग टू एंड एंड देन देर इज अनदर कलामिटी एंड दैट टेक्स ओवर द प्रीवियस वन एंड वेन वंस दिस पास इज इन अनदर थ्री मंथस और सिक्स मंथस द वर्ल्ड वुड बी वेरी डिफरेंट बट वी आर प्रॉब्लम गोइंग टू फर्गेट दिस टाइम 10 years ago we were in the lockdown due to terrorism in in Pakistan we had problems with the school a couple of years ago we had we had that whole sense of uh, our our children safe with with the child abuse scandal so there will always be a calamity this one will pass too you want to also focus on that and and instead mm. of overthinking it you want to come to the present and think about things you can do right now which are in your control and um, and umar a lot of good things happened after the things that you were yeah. mentioning you know yeah. we became more aware of uh, the uh, pollution and what we needed to do about it we, we started educating our kids about child abuse we started to you know do some anti terrorism measures so a lot Absolutely. starts to happen right things start to change so there is some silver lining to all of this absolutely yeah there is one more thing that sabrina um, sabrina ha sabrina you were adding something yeah assalam alaikum to all actually mai bas yes priti we a kisi ne mentioned kiya na that she is uh, overburdened by all the things that she is studying she is taking care of like i joined actually fly lady uh, uh, she is in america and uh, she uh, she had a group of lovely women out there and uh, uh, you teach them how to keep yourself in for example she used to say just one time washing and you start the timer 15 minutes and the particular thing and then just sit back so mujhe wo jo bande hai perspective is important wo burden hai without any help without any help to hum log cha rahe hain ki sab kuch ek din mein kare humne ye bhi kar ये भी करना ये भी करना ये भी करना नहीं ऐसे नहीं चाहिए मैं परफेक्शनिस्ट हूँ मतलब ये कोई अच्छी चीज नहीं है तो भी अच्छी चीज नहीं है बट आई हैव लर्न अ लॉट थ्रू दिस मैंने एक एक चीज को एक एक टाइम के आई एम नॉट ओवर बर्निंग माई सेल्फ फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई हैव टू डू माई वर्क आउट डेली सो आई हैव क्वीज इन दैट वन एंड हाफ आवर आई है Things to do the cleaning, whatever. Family mm. demand. My children are studying, mashallah. But their mm. beauty is very good. In time, so I remember that. Look, he has done it in such a good way. He says, "Fifteen times, fifteen minutes of timer. Lagai mm. and do this thing. Just kitchen. That he has to work. Fifteen times. That's okay. Have a cup of tea." Mm. दूसरी इम्पोर्टेंट बात जो आप कह रही है की मैं तो ये देखती हूँ की मुझे ओवरवेल कर रहा है या नहीं that kind of reflection on every day hour to hour basis is very important theek hai kyunki agar aap apne overwhelm ko khud hi fix nahi kar pa rahe so it will turn into a blow up very soon theek hai so the moment you feel ke ab meri ya tange dukh rahi hai ya mera dimag ghum raha hai ya mujhe agle bande ki baat properly samajh nahi aa rahi hai right ya uh, यू नो मुझे घुटन हो रही है कोई भी आपको साइन ऐसा जो डिस्ट्रेगुलेशन इंडिकेट कर रहा है यू पे अटेंशन टू दैट अगर टांगे दुख रही हैं आपको बैठ के करने वाला काम कर ले राइट right? अगर आपको अगले बंदे की बात समझ नहीं आ रही है आप किचन में जाके बर्तन हो ले यू अंडरस्टैंड लाइक स्केच अपने uh, आप से चेक इन करना बहुत जरूरी है बजाय इसके कि जस्ट फोकस ऑन द स्केड्यूल्थ लिसन टू योर 
that's very very important and i would uh, i would add sure. one more thing mariam yeah. i have a question hmm sure ji mariam i have a, uh, we are talking about our personal calmness right now if if we wanted to discuss about any other family member who is uh, taking anxiety hmm. due to this situation hmm. uh, so how can hmm. we cope with uh, with them like uh, um, i'm also overburdened all the household i have to do but my sons they are in university uh, they are getting hmm. daily their online classes also uh, my eldest son he took the hold of the uh, whole uh, disinfecting the whole house and other tasks also he has started cooking he uh, and it is very surprising for me he is starting mm. mopping of the mm. whole house but i know he's mm. he's taking mm. lots of anxiety that uh, we can get infected ah. so Achha, i think so this, this is very uh, very important I'm, i'm just sharing with this you is very I, important. I, i was getting yes. very upset i i had lots of arguments in the start because he has got all the who information all the time he used he made me sit in front of his computer and he he showed me all the mm. information and said mama you are the person who need to get more um, information and you do not need to go out okay then he's uh, then okay. i started noticing that he's getting a uh, uh, high level of anxiety then okay. i stopped uh, having argument with him whatever he's been Good. saying asking uh, from me don't do this don't do that uh, uh, do this uh, precaution to the i just stop i just start accepting his all his suggestions hmm. because i uh, it is very very much stressful and it made makes hmm. me uh, uh, tired also and uh, on the same time he also gets can tired can you please of... answer that now yeah, yeah in the interest of time can i please answer that yes, now yes, because yes. it's very very important it's yeah. one thing to regulate yourself and see when you're dysregulated and it is another thing to notice that someone around you is also dysregulated yes okay and in every household in every system there will be one person who would have taken up that anxiety jo ke wo us anxiety ko suck karke aur represent kar raha hoga and will be trying to really protect everyone and that person is a vulnerable person mental health wise so all of you need to kind of keep an eye on that that yeah. who is that person around yeah. you okay एंड उसमें ये है दैट आप व्हाट यू कैन डू इज जो चीजें हमने आपके लिए बताई हैं दैट हेल्प देम सी दैट इन द मिडल ऑफ ऑल ऑफ दिस देयर स्टे राइट बिकॉज़ व्हाट दिस पेंडेमिक हैज डन फॉर देम इज टेकिंग अवे देयर सेंस ऑफ सेफ्टी या दैट्स व्हाई इट्स कॉजिंग देम सो मच एंजाइटी राइट सो हेल्प देम सी दैट इन दैट लिटिल मोमेंट इन दिस प्रेजेंट मोमेंट देयर स्टे सो हेल्प देम सी दैट ए be somehow regulate their physical exercise theek hai that uh, because wo zehen itna zyada uh, uh, activated hai aur worry mein hai jo umar baat kar raha tha aur sirf negative scenarios uh, paint kar raha hai to body us pe affect hoti hai so if you start activating the body it releases those um, let's say good hormones that enable your mind to relax theek hai so unko aap 40 minutes ke liye jog pe bhej de right mm-hmm. ya koi is tarah ki strenuous um, outdoor activity ke liye bhej de jisme unka system re regulate ho this is very important thank you acha maria man tumar uh, one of the things that you know um, from a mental well being perspective uh, covid or no covid situation i personally felt in my own sort of journey that gratitude is something which is a complete yeah. antidote exactly to uh, you exactly. know anxiety and stress uh, or you know kind of uh, well being issues now mentally and physically both so i think this covid situation if you look at it slightly from a spiritual side um you know um, being is enough yeah. one of yeah. the lessons mm. which you no know, covid is giving us that being is enough Uh, yeah. we as humans we have been uh, being busy all the time uh, multitasking and all of that but if you look at that being is enough you are in the moment you're doing something and then there are many things that you used to do you're not doing mm-hmm. so that yeah. gives you a little bit of being uh, that mm-hmm. was not there um, and feeling grateful for what you have in the moment 
really takes away a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress that is coming your way. True. Um, in terms of True. practicing this and keeping it on top of mind, do you have some, certain sort of, you know, practices or something to share specifically on, on, this, on this bit of being? I think um, I'll just add a few things if, if they are beneficial. I think um, uh, when it comes to practices, different people respond to different things uh, because everyone uh, uh, has their own temperaments. But uh, just just connecting with, with 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 anything that grounds you. For some people, that's using your hands. I've had so many people tell us that they've been cooking, they've been cleaning. And, and that's so grounding for them in these days. They've not done that for in years. There are other people who are saying that, well, we've just been washing our clothes, working on our garden. We've, we've been meaning to do some of those do-it-yourself projects. And right now we're doing that. So for some people that may be doing tasks with your hands, for other people, uh, like Mariam suggested, doing a check-in, uh, that, that what am I sensing right now? What am I feeling? What are some of my images? What are some of my thoughts? Uh, or you can, you can, another thing I find useful uh, and I suggest to a lot of people is just what is called naming it to taming it. That every time you're, you're just monitoring your, your mental activity, whatever is happening, uh, you just continue to say it out as one word that this is this emotion I'm feeling. Now I'm having a memory. Mm. Uh, right now I'm anticipating mm. something. Right now I'm going back to something. I'm having a memory. Mm. So it's just, just your keeping a track of your thoughts and your body and whatever is coming back. And that if someone is uh, disconnected and they, they, they don't know what's happening, they can just keep in check with whatever is happening in their body. Because sometimes when people are not aware of things, uh, then under our mental radar, they're still affecting our body. And they may come up as, as bodily aches and pains. They may just show up as uh, just, just uh, hyperventilation. They may show up as vigilance. They may show up as uh, maybe maybe uh, any other bodily symptoms. So just checking in, doing uh, doing doing that quick mental check in or doing that physical check in. What's happening with my body? And more so, I think finding some way that your anxiety can be translated into some actions. Like Mariam said, that if someone is feeling that overwhelmed, then then just maybe just go for a walk. Or maybe take some time that if you if, if you want to uh, if, if there's uh, that that's also one thing that that I'm noticing in May there were so many things that we've been able to outsource our cooking and our cleaning and our driving and everything has been outsourced. If you do some of those things yourself, these things will occupy a lot of your attention. So we're very used to this that our all things are outsourced. Hoti hai, jo sabse zyada high value activities hoti hai, like projects, plans. We pay so much attention to them. Yeah. Whereas when those are not working out or, or those are somehow uh, disappointments, we are equally affected by it. So right now we can spread out that attention, that our attention can also be equally towards cleaning, it can be towards cooking, it can be towards our children, it can be towards whatever is meaningful to us. And in that way, we can connect with them. Instead of that very mm. disconnected way of going through life, which is, mm. ke, I, I don't know who's teaching my children. I don't know ke, do se teen baje ke beech mein, how, how my child so, eats their lunch. I don't know what happens when. So this is also an opportunity for people to connect with whatever mm. they wish to connect with right now. Uh, mm. Gratitude is also a part of it. I, I, that may not work mm. for everyone, but it's also about that recognition that there are always people above us in the social hierarchy and people who are below us mm. in that social hierarchy. And if you're feeling on, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. On on this gratitude, it just you know clicked. Uh, remember when uh, Prince Charles uh, got it, mm -hmm. got the virus, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh my god. I mean, I have the privilege to close my door and not meet anyone, right? He doesn't. And that's why he had, he kind of got, got it in the first place, right? So you just don't, if you have that kind of gratitude ka perspective, you just don't feel that in your own circumstance, you have a lot more control maybe than what Prince Charles has in, um, on, in his environment, right? So that perspective of being grateful actually helps you um, look at the world differently. But again, Amra, um, to answer that, I don't think it works for everyone. And also, uh, they allow yourself to be ungrateful at times too. 
that is self compassion that there are times when i will be anxious there will be times when i will be sad there will be times when i will be disturbed because of this and then there will be times when i will be happy and then there will be times where i'll be grateful and then there will be times where i will enjoy and seek some pleasure in my daily activity so this kind of pressure that we impose ourselves that we have to be okay throughout the week throughout the month at all times no matter what happens that's not human right so i think just this um a uh, covid situation is helping us be more human right mm-hmm. see our own vulnerability our indestructibility and uh, that you know we can fall we can get up and we can be okay again yeah it's a great uh, message that has come from fatima also on the chat box uh she is also saying that you know it's not um, i'm just trying to uh take that um so she's saying that uh, true uh, calibration true cat- gratitude and self reflection self awareness but some people need help to reach that point reaching that point mm-hmm. mein ye dekh rahi thi it was a very very good message that's true yeah. it's not let's not take that for granted you know that i will just wake up and i will have that kind of self regulation yeah. and now and is actually a very good time for that, that. For that mm. i have noticed that a lot of my clients who were being inconsistent previously they are now taking that time for themselves mujhe mm-hmm. shuru shuru mein jab with the covid situation for the first one week or 10 days i found found it slightly strange that uh, people are just talking about their own selves rather than talking about the situation but what what i quickly gathered is that that a lot of people are using this opportunity for their self care and self growth and uh processing that that a lot of people right now are doing their spring cleaning with me which they've meant to do it for years so maybe right now is a very good time for you to uh take it take professional help if if this is finally the time that you have that time for yourself that you can take an hour or two a lot of uh, psychologists and therapists right now are taking extra time uh everyone is working from home uh, so so what you cannot manage on your own please do get professional help as well I would add one more thing here uh, that what has helped me personally a lot is that I generally I'm not a very planned person but since I am being used to of having my to-do list and doing that I kind of made up my own to-do list for the day uh, and that I do it right night before sometimes mentally sometimes I write on my phone not very punctual about it but i still write what kind of mood i want tomorrow for myself and i set up when i get up it sort of set my mood automatically for that day in writing it down uh, in some paper on a phone or something has helped me realize it in my mind as a cue to myself and also i ask myself a very important question that what is important for me today so it is not necessary that everything is important important today i can do what is important for me today so for example today cooking is very important for me and at second point i have a very important meeting and third uh, there is a time coming in for my very important class of my kid which i need to support and these three things are important for me for the day and that's all right uh, i don't need to put everything as important and urgently to be done today this is helping me into maintaining my own sanity in a way that i'm picking and choosing the day myself so what i am trying to do for myself is and i'm designing my day the way i want in then i feel i'm very thankful about it it's not uh, only that i'm prioritizing i'm able to handle it myself but rather i am able to define it for myself rather than the society or my workplace or my other opportunity is designing it for me i can do it myself and i'm so thankful for it so by the time the day end i feel sort of very instant gratification that is coming to me right away and at the end of the day i can say oh wow i have done these these things that were important and i have that sense of achieving which is probably suiting to myself that i need that sense of achievement every day so i can you know pinpoint it to the things that are important and they those are constituting my entire day some days it is only house chores by the way i'm not doing my work at all that day and that's perfectly mm-hmm. fine because i know that i would yeah. be able to meet my deadlines whatever they are 
and these things are important too so probably reprioritizing mm. the life overall mm. rather than the mm. work only rather than the house chores only but i am able to reprioritize my entire life and that is mm. giving me a moment to say my gratitude so maybe the gratitude is not coming naturally but at the end of the day when i'm oh thank god i've done this today wow this pat on the back is very important for some people so absolutely. this might help as well absolutely absolutely and also i think we're not able to, the to do some of these things sorry i yeah. just said and if so, you're not uh, able to do some right of too. those things too that's all right too yeah that's all right so you can you know you can do it for the next day and you can set up your mood for the tomorrow uh, how it will be and you can write one day before that brings us to the, the reminders sabad i'm actually loving the reminders which are coming from mariam that it's okay if you, <laughs> yes, it's okay <laughs> it is okay if you feel bad it is still okay yeah. <laughs> so i love <laughs> yeah. you main reminders that guys you know i thank you very much mariam for telling us that how much perfect <laughs> and you know the the, the idealist we are so thank you for that Yes. <laughs> so it's okay the most important part is i think my take away from this uh, discussion is it's okay not to do something not being able to do something not being in the race all that time uh, it's okay uh, i think everyone can say that together it's okay <laughs> it's okay it's fine it's okay it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. assalam alaikum can i add something okay it's okay sir bushra <laughs> actually i was enjoying the talk and i was listening keenly uh, what everyone was saying and everyone had said so beautiful and interpreted everything in a such a nice way that i must appreciate that it was a good session and i enjoyed it a lot and the one thing that i would say and i one thing i would like to say add on to it is that self awareness and about the surrounding is important no doubt about it but the main thing is Okay, being a Muslim, being a human being, what we can do, we must do it, and uh, even a single step can count on everything. Even a single step, even the person coming at your gate, if he is ringing a bell, that that means he is desperately in need of something. So we must answer that instead of that virus. कि हम जो वायरस से डर के हम उससे बात ना करें और हम उसकी जो है रिक्वायरमेंट है उसकी कोई नीड है उसको हम पूरी नहीं करें तो छोटे छोटे कदम होते हुए इंसान को जो है ना साथ साथ अपनी जिंदगी के उठाने चाहिए हम बड़े लेवल पे कुछ कुछ ना कर सकते लेकिन एटलीस्ट अपने लेवल पे जितना जो कर सकते हैं हमें जरूर करें बिल्कुल Thank you, Bushra. Uh, I think I'll take just one or two more comments if I, if anybody would like to share. And uh, I'm sorry, we are running short of time now. Actually, we have uh, reached to the end of the time of this session. And um, over to anyone, uh, one or two comments if you can add. Uh, Sabat, can I? Sure, it's right. Sure. It was so nice to hear from Maryam after so long. I know her personally, and it's it's the time that. <laughs> we need to have such kind of talk the only thing which i i can just add by listening to all of you absolutely like your self awareness and everything everything uh, accountable right now but i think somehow religiously we have uh, um, we need to contribute into the society positively a very small deed will give you a satisfaction inside and that gives as you said mariam that the hormones and all that you you can well connect the things which gives you inner satisfaction and i think that is the most important requirement at the time but it was so nice that i was just listening to all of you and uh, it gives so many satisfaction and and i really want to say it's okay yes <laughs> it's okay <laughs> yeah thank you it's good thank, thank you anyone else uh Thank you, uh, both the speakers, for Maryam and Omar, for your time. This was uh, this was definitely a great session, and we enjoyed having you two around. And I think all What of us are not having you around. Yes, sorry, sorry, I'm not saying it again. I said once again, we thoroughly yes. enjoyed. Yes, 
both of you. Yes, together. once again, we, we enjoyed it. And uh, I think uh, this is the beauty of this conversation that all of us can share what we have in our mind. And uh, all of us have taken and shared our piece of advices for each other and being together, being here in this moment was very, very yeah. important for all of us. Uh, COVID or no COVID, we all are here together. Yeah. And as uh, Raba, uh, Itrat has shared that there's some contribution is required in the society. And this HBP togetherness is the society that we are in here, all of us in together. So anybody feeling any need of a sanity check, here we are, here all of us are. Uh, the HUB platform is there for your sanity check. And let's say it, it's all right. It's okay, everyone, it's okay. Thank you so very much, everyone, for the great session today. Thank you, Omar. Thank, Thank you, you Maria. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Take good care you. of yourselves. Take care, everyone. Take care of yourself. Right. It's okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, okay. everyone. Okay. It's Bye. okay. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Stay safe. Same to you.